Hey, what's going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to get the home lab started up again. And in this video, we are going to cover the installation process and some configuration changes using the dashboard dashi. So with that being said, let's get to it. So for the very first step, I'm going to go ahead and set a static IP address for this server. So what that will do is that if we wanted to access this in the future and the IP address that changed for whatever reason, if we were using a DHCP server, for instance, we would not be able to access it until we go in and look at the documentation or the network um, infrastructure and see what that new IP address is. So if we have a static IP address, we know for the time being, while the server is being used, that 192.168.1.107 is assigned to this server. And on this server, it's hosting Dashi on port 4000. So the very first thing that I usually do when we're doing stuff like this is setting a static IP address. So to do that, you're going to go ahead and SSH into that server that you're hosting this on. And we're going to go over to the ETC uh, net plan. And in there, you should have a default configuration. So in this case, it's 0 installer configyaml It's a YAML file. So if we go ahead and go into there, using Vim or whatever editor you are comfortable with. And here is going to be the final configuration that you will need. This will all be in the documentation in the comments below. I have a blog post and it also will be in the GitHub. So coming down from the top, we have the network version two render network D. This is just the underlying software that is going to be used to implement this network information. Ethernets. So here's going to be the Ethernet that we are concerned about. So ETH0, DHCP4, false. I believe this is actually deprecated, but I left it in there because it did seem to still work. Um, but essentially, if this isn't deprecated, DHCP4 setting that to false will mean that we are not using a DHCP server. So we are obviously going after a static IP address. Below that, we have addresses, and this is the address that we want to set, followed by the CIDR range. So 192.168.1.107 slash 24. So we are within that subnet of 254 addressable IP. Below that will be name servers and then addresses. So this is where you're going to have your DNS server. And then your routes, default, and 192.168.1.2. That is my gateway. And that's it. So then once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and save that. In my case, I'm just going to quit out. And then you're just going to run sudo net plan apply. I already have uh, this already configured. Don't worry about this. It's irrelevant depending on what you're using. Um, but in that case, you will now have it configured. So now if we do I have config, if you have this installed, which I wrote with a net tools, I have config ETH0. You'll be able to get that information about that IP address. And here you can see we have 192.168.1.107. And that is exactly what we're going after. All right, so next we are going to want to get the Docker Compose file on our server. There's a number of ways of going about this. One of the ways is using a Python server and transferring that over. Another way, what I do now is using Visual Studio Code and then SSHing into that server and then just pretty much copying and pasting. I'll leave that for you to decide. But whatever you got to do is you're going to go over to dashi.to slash docs slash deployment. And in there, scroll down until you get to using Docker Compose. And then you're going to go ahead and just pretty much grab this Docker Compose here and get it on that server. All right. So once you have the Docker Compose file on your server, place it in any directory you would like. And then go ahead and we'll just kind of cover that file real quick. So Docker Compose. So starting from the top, here's the image that we are going to be using. This can be found on Docker Hub. Here's the container name. This can be whatever you would like. The volumes, this is good to have if you want to have a persistent volume. So if you ever were to move this data to another server, you now have this volume stored locally, which could be, we could talk about this in another video. Uh, ports, so on, this is going to be the external port, we'll how we are going to access it. And then this is the internal port for this specific Docker 8080. Um, nothing else really kind of applies here. And then at the bottom, you definitely got to have a directive uh, for the volume. So dash the volume. All right. So then we're just going to close out of there. After you make the changes, you're going to right quit. In my case, I already have it. So quit. 
and then we're just going to clear this out and then do sudo docker compose up dash d make sure you do that within the directory that has that docker compose file and that's going to bring it up in a detached fashion so it's not taking over our terminal i already have it running as you can see here so at this point as you've seen at the very beginning of this video is you could go ahead and head over to that IP address that we had specified earlier, the static IP address, and then followed by port 4000. And you should be brought to your dashy dashboard. For the remainder of this video, we are just going to go over a quick process in order to maintain the home lab environment within GitHub. Uh, so that's kind of my thought process going forward as far as documenting and managing configuration files. Uh, so in this case, this is just getting started. Um, so you can see we have our servers and services listed, and this is just a quick way for me to reference. Um, but what we're, what we're going to do in the rest of this video is get that set up where you could go ahead and push it, your configuration changes to your new GitHub repository using SSH. Pretty simple, but we'll, we'll cover that right now. So first, after you log in, you're going to go ahead and go to repositories. And on the top right, you're going to go ahead and click new. And in there, you'll have the owner, which is you, obviously, and then the repository name. In my case, I put home lab. And again, I'm going to use private because I don't want anyone to have access to my configuration files and or whatever else I have in that repository. Then you're going to go ahead and click create repository. So the thought process here is if we go ahead and list out the contents of this directory, I had created a home lab directory. And essentially, this is going to be our our um, GitHub directory. And then in there, I created a dashy home lab dashboard directory. And that's where it's going to be the configuration uh, YAML file. Um, so essentially, anytime any changes get made to the dashy dashboard, the configuration YAML file is a hard link to that file, which I will cover in a second. And then that will get pushed over to this directory. And then we would just run a git uh, push to push that new configuration to our GitHub repository. Um, so what you need to do is. So what you need to do is make a directory that matches your repository. So in my case, like I said, is home lab. And then in there, make another directory. Uh, in my case, I put dashy home lab dashboard. Um, so at that point. You're going to go ahead head in, into that directory and then, you, and then you're going to use sudo ln sudo ln var lib docker volumes dash a dash a volume underscore data conf dot yaml conf dot yaml so what that is this is the source and this is the destination so we are going to link the current file within this directory conf.yaml to the actual conf.yaml within that persistent volume that we had discussed earlier just to show you so if we sudo ls we'll see a data directory we'll go ahead and list out the data directory and in there we'll have the conf dash Uh, comp dash yaml these are all backups and this is the one we want so if we run sudo ln again this is the source and then we'll do the destination that'll create a file here as you can see in green that'll create this file so anytime any changes get change any changes get made to any of these files they'll both get updated so if we go into dash the dashboard and we make any changes that will get updated and now we'll have within our local github repository the changes made next head over to the ssh directory and in there we're going to go ahead and run a quick command so ssh keygen dash t to specify here you want to put the github email so whatever email address that you use to log into your github repository that's just an example if you want to enter uh, you can leave this default so this will save in the current directory that you were working in Passphrase, you could leave it empty or you could use one. So now, if we list out the contents of this directory, we could see that we now have a um, yeah, 
these are the ones we just created i hope i didn't overwrite any but these are the ones i used previously uh so these are the ones that we had just created so in that case we're going to go ahead and do one more thing so if you list out the contents of this directory you're going to see a config file this is useful if you wanted to Um, so in the future, if you don't want to specify the identity file or the private key, when you're going to go ahead and push to the GitHub directory or GitHub repository, you're going to want to go ahead and create a config file and in that directory specify an identity file. So in your case, you would do identity file followed by the private key that you had just created. And that way it is every time you restart the server, you do not have to specify um, the private key key pair when you're going to go ahead and push to that github repository then you're going to head back over to your github you're going to go to settings over here on the right down here and on the left you're going to go ahead and go to ssh and gpg keys and at the top right you'll see something that says new ssh key go ahead and just put whatever you want maybe home lab or dashy whatever you want there and then go ahead and copy the contents of that ssh public key that we had just created and that's going to go in here just to highlight real quick the public key that i was mentioning that you have to copy the contents of that that file is going to be the one with the dot pub extension so you're going to go ahead and copy that place that in the keys file that we had just created within our github repository so at this point we have our ssh key created it's on our github repository and we also have it on our in our config our identity file so if we go back to our um, dashy this is not necessary right now but just for the next step and then we'll go into sorry go into the home lab and then dashy that'll be for the next step um, but we want to go ahead and test our ssh connection so we'll go ahead and do ssh dash key git at github.com and we should see pq by allocation request fell on channel zero otherwise you will get a um I forget what the error let's just test something yeah you'll get something like this saying permission denied public key and if you didn't have it in your config if you didn't have that um, identity file within that config within the ssh directory you're going to have to use the i to go ahead and specify to go ahead and specify that ssh key and again it's going to be the private key and that will go ahead and then you should get that same thing so in my case if we did uh, github we should get the PTY allocation request failed on channel zero. So this is just an example. Obviously, I had already done it. Um, but in that case, you're going to go ahead and this is provided by GitHub. So after you create that new repository and you go into it, so the Homeland repository, this is just an example one. Here at the bottom, you're going to go ahead and run git in it for it to initialize it in that directory. So you're going to make sure that you're inside of that directory on that server. You don't have to do this. I do it because I'm going to have some of my documentation within this markdown file. Then you're going to run git commit dash M. And then you're going to specify the first commit uh, or whatever you want. This is just a comment essentially. So when you come back in here later on, you'll be able to get an idea of what that commit was about. Then you're going to specify the branch. You're going to add the git remote add origin, git add GitHub. And then this is going to be your username. And then this is going to be the repository. So in the example that we're using, it's going to be homelab.git and whatever username you got. And then you're going to do git push dash u origin main origin main. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's going to go ahead and create that initial git uh, file. And it's going to push it over to the um, repository, especially that we already have the link created um, for the configuration file. So that's going to go ahead and push it over to this. Um, and that's pretty much it. Actually, I will add that if you do not use the git add readme.md, you're going to go ahead and want to add the uh, file that we had just linked earlier. So you would do git add and then whatever that file was, so the conf.yaml file, and then you go ahead and finish out the rest here. All right, so at, at this point, we now have the ability to SSH. We're able to push the files to the Dashy Home Lab dashboard. And one thing that I took it a step further just for fun, I went ahead and automated it. So I had created a script. So if we back out and we go into the scripts folder that I had created, you're going to see two files. One of them is green, which I'll explain in a minute. So if we go ahead and cat or read out the update, 
you're going to see this bash script that I had created. Pretty simple. Change to the directory of your Git repository. So in this case, this is my GitHub repository uh, stored locally, obviously. Uh, add all changes to the staging area. So you're going to use git add star. So any changes that were made, it's going to add it to the staging. And then we're going to go ahead and add that comment. So in this case, we're going to git commit dash M and then we're going to use the date variable. So every day that this is ran, if it is ran, um, it's going to go ahead and add that as the comment. And then it's going to push git push origin in. Uh, and in the way that I automate this, so I keep this here. Um, first, you're going to have to make this a executable, as you can see here with the X. So you could just do chmod, and then you're going to just do um, plus X, and then the file, which is going to be update. And that I would make, add that uh, executable. And then the next thing that you're going to want to going to want to do is going to go ahead and do cron tab dash E, and in here. If you're not familiar with it, cron jobs, it's an automated system really built into the Linux server. And um, so every day at, uh, this is just testing, I kind of just left it. There's a nice website uh, that I'll provide in the, in the description below that kind of helps you with determining the time, <clears throat> determining the time. Uh, but here at the top, you can see there's some examples up here. Um, and here's another example. So this is running, I think at 437, because this is using a 24 hour clock. And this is every day, every month, every day, or every year, or something like that. And then this is going to be the uh, directory update GitHub, the bash script that we had just created. And it's going to write out the contents of that directory um, from a standard error, I believe, uh, to cron.log. Uh, so if we go out into here and we list out this, you could see that the Maybe there was an error. I can't remember. I think it just writes out everything. Um, you can see everything. Uh, so it's just a log for us to kind of quickly view and see what's going on if we were to troubleshoot it. Um, and just to kind of highlight, uh, so we're in the GitHub repository. And as you can see, the last change was pushed uh, two weeks ago when I had made changes to the dashboard. Automate, automated commit. Here's the date. So that's pretty cool. Um, this one every day is just going to be the cron log. I could just remove that so it's not getting pushed, but it's just pushing those updates every day if there's any changes being made. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to end that video here. So in a future video, we're going to go ahead and cover the changes that could be made to the Dashy dashboard. Uh, so in that case, we'll kind of close this out here. I will add the references below in the description uh, with the various links that you could use to kind of get the documentation from uh, dashy.to and also I'm going to upload these files into a public github repository under YouTube labs and I'll put that also in the description below and as always never stop learning